creatine monohydrate. Where do you start? All right, so here's how creatine works. All right, so we know that carbs provide quick energy and anaerobic environments, right, so without oxygen. And we know that fats provide slow energy and low intensity state environments, so with oxygen. The breakdown of carbohydrates, fats, and ketones produce ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. So when these cells use ATP for energy, they broken down into adenosine diphosphate, so ADP, so alpha delta papa, and adenosine monophosphate, so AMP. So all creatine really does in simple terms is donating a phosphate group, which is energy, to adenosine diphosphate, so the ADP, to again make ATP. All right, so that's enough of ATP, ADP, AMP, or ABC, or something like that. And again, to put this in even more simple terms, creatine basically just helps recycle ATP faster, which is the energy. So when we do like ridiculously heavy weights, let's say one rep max, doubles, triples, we deplete a lot of the ATP energy stores. Therefore, creatine supp supplementation might actually increase strength and power output. And the creatine storage capacity is actually limited. So the only way you can really increase this is by increasing your muscle mass. So that means just get jacked. And because the stores are limited, glucose and fatty acids are actually responsible to replenish this ATP for the long duration. So the long term and long term strategy. The main storage of creatine in the human body is in skeletal contractile muscles, so in our muscles. And the same goes in animals. So when we eat these animals, that means meat products, they contain probably the most amount of creatine. Hence why I always say, if you don't have a lot of red meat in your diet, maybe even just twice a week, then maybe creatine supplementation is for you. Supplementation. <laughs> Dairy products also contain some creatine for those of you who didn't know that either. Right, so here's why most people think creatine is a magic dose or I don't know what, the magic pill powder. So when creatine is absorbed, it pulls water in with it, leading to cell swelling, making basically your muscles or let's say your arms look a little bit bigger. And according to two meta analysis, again, loads of studies in one showing a greater increase in power output during eight weeks in males and females. And probably the one that you're probably most interested in and that's when to take it. Now, the research, I guess, kind of goes on the side of taking it closer to the worker, so pre-worker or post-worker. Some studies have said better post-worker, but maybe just take it closer to your workout time. Um, but I mean, again, it's like same with meal timing. Overall, what it really comes down to is just taking a damn creatine. So probably the most important part of this video, the responders and non-responders. So the responders, as you probably could have guessed, are the ones that could see a lot of change or at least some change. And the non-responders, the complete opposite of that. Typically, the non-responders have smaller muscles, less type 2 muscle fibers, and already have quite a lot of creatine in their muscles. And again, like I said, there's a limited capacity. So if that might be you, there's probably no point of continue taking creatine for at least when it comes to increasing strength and size. So that's that, that's creatine monohydrate. If you're gonna take this supplement, keep in mind, don't panic too much if the weight on the scale increases way too much, let's say five pounds in a matter of days, because like I said, when you consume creatine, it will pull more water into the cells, therefore making you probably look a bit bigger as well and scale weight really increasing up. So that's that. Anyway, man, Enough is enough. I haven't taken creatine monohydrate in a while. And I guess the main benefit of the supplement is that it's actually very, very cheap, right? Let's not beat around the bush. I paid like, I don't know what it was like, eight pounds and I've got this for years and years. I mean, I don't use it all the time. And maybe that's another point that I've just brought up and it just came to my head is that maybe you want to cycle your creatine. Maybe you want to do eight weeks on, eight weeks off. And one thing I probably have to mention for those of you who don't know, and for those of you who are looking to get shredded, creatine might not be the supplement to take as it makes you hold more water and you want to be as dry as possible when you're shredded or ripped and you want to get those abs popping. So that's that. That's creatine monohydrate. Most of the things you need to know, there's probably a lot more you need to know. But again, in my opinion, or just one thing I want you to take away from this video is don't think black and white. Don't think creatine is the be all end all. Make sure you have your calories in check, your total protein, daily protein in check, your macronutrients, and then you can start worrying about supplements. Again, to summarize, if you don't eat a lot of red meat, or let's say even that twice a week, 
or you don't even eat a lot of dairy products or if you're a vegetarian or a vegan maybe creatine would be a good supplement for you that's that as always man you know the deal man stay positive stay smiling let's get it and as always subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one